Hi, thanks for watching um, Horse Spots Camper YouTube channel. Um, in today's video, I'm going to do something slightly different. Um, because I'm essentially a geek at heart, I've uh, created a dashboard, information dashboard for the camper that um, was made from a old dead laptop screen. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do the same. So before I uh, get into uh, showing you how I made it, um, what I'll do is zoom in on the screen and uh, give you an idea of what it can actually do and uh, also some of the stuff I want to do in the future. Right, okay, um, sorry about the really weird angle, it's just it's not an easy thing to film because um, I can't light it properly because it'll just reflect off the screen so uh, it is what it is I'm afraid. So uh, I just wanted to give you a quick run through of what the actual screen does. Um, so the first screen is our information dashboard. So you have weather information across the bottom. You've got tide times for your local uh, sea bit, um, sort of time and date up there. And you've got our calendar, which links to a Google calendar. Um, I, we've got a special one set up so it doesn't actually show all of our stuff on our Google calendars. You've got to-do lists and various reminders and you can configure all of this uh, so it's completely customizable. So on the next screen, this is linked to our um, afterburner Chinese diesel heater controller, which is amazing. If you haven't got one of those already, you need one. Um, so obviously it shows you all the controls and everything like that. And if I actually had a mouse attached, I'd be able to control it from this screen as well, but I don't. Um, I made the decision not to make this touch screen because of being right next to the door, you'd end up brushing past it and everything like that. And then on the third one, this is a thing called Pie Hole, which is a DNS ad blocker. So um, we all know those sort of websites that come up and they're 90% adverts. Well, this will actually remove all of those. Um, it's not up and running at the moment, um, basically just because I haven't got around to doing it. Um, you need to change your DNS settings in your router and I'm a little bit scared to be honest because uh, I need to work so uh, but anyway that's installed as well and then finally I have the Victron VRM which um, links to obviously my VMV 712 monitor which is right above there so this is just reloading because we've refreshed the screen So, obviously here we go, we've got our historic data at the bottom. For some reason it keeps defaulting to a different size of screen, but anyway, it, it tells all the uh, useful bits. So obviously battery's on 100%, um, I'm using 48 watts of DC power, and because my batteries are 100%, we're only just bringing in enough to keep the batteries topped up. And the screens are controlled by a little button underneath. So, uh, so anyway, that's a quick run through of what it does, and uh, I will go on to show you how I actually built it. Right, I just wanted to show you the um, the back of the uh, information dashboard, magic mirror, whatever you would like to call it, and uh, take you through all the various components of it and uh, how it works. Um, so essentially we have a screen from an old laptop that is mounted under this piece of wood here. So you can see the back of the old screen there. So I removed this from a dead laptop. The screen was still working. Um, then you need to Google the model number of the laptop that you're looking at, which then allows you to draw by the driver board. Okay, so open up Google Chrome. Just type in the model of the laptop plus driver board and you'll get various listings. I found eBay was the best place for them. And uh, second one on the list, there you go. OK, so this allows you to buy the driver board that connects to the laptop through a small ribbon connector there. I've got it uh, taped down because the things keep falling out. Um, this comes with a control board. 
Um, so that has a power button. You can access menu, flip the screen and stuff like that. So and as you can see, it's got audio out, VGA in, DVI-D, HDMI, and then a 12 volt power supply. So this takes me on to the, uh, the main bits that I've done. So obviously the whole thing is controlled by a normal 12 volt USB cigarette lighter socket. So this comes in to this junction box here. So the brains of the operation is a Raspberry Pi Model 3, I believe, that has built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and everything like that. So this is powered off 5 volts. So what we've had to do is split the power in this box here that goes through a voltage regulator that gives you a steady 12 volts, or I think 11.8 volts in this case. Because obviously when your batteries are charging, you can get up to as high as 14.4 volts. So I didn't fancy running that through a uh, laptop screen. So this supplies a pure 11.9 volt power supply that connects to the driver board that then runs the screen. The other part of the power supply comes off to a 5 volt step down converter that goes to a USB. So then this powers the Raspberry Pi. So the actual Raspberry Pi has a whole set of GPIO pins here and then I have a, another button connected to this that's just a little momentary push button that will then um, take you through all the various screens like you saw on the uh, previous display. So, uh, so that is essentially it and I've just mounted it into a picture frame and put a wooden frame on the back to actually hide all the electronics. It's as simple as that. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll go through how I uh, programmed it all. OK, to go through the um, how this is all programmed, I just wanted to do a quick um, overview. Um, we've SSH'd into the Raspberry Pi itself, and um, what I've done is I've just um, catted um, all the various scripts and bits of configuration that I did. In a nutshell, what happens when the button is pushed there is a Python program called switch.py and that listens out on the GPIO pins for the button push. And then when that button push occurs, it does something. And in this case, it runs a script called switchtab.sh. And essentially what that script is doing, it is mimicking the button push on a keyboard for control, shift and tab, which flips between the um, open tabs in a browser. So when you first launch the Chromium browser on the Raspberry Pi, you can automatically open various um, URLs and you can see those listed below. And obviously one of them is for the DAC board software, which has a very handy URL, which you can share to any internet attached device. Uh, the other is the um, Victron VRM, which has a very handy share URL, which I've clouded out, um, just so you guys can't get hold of my Victron VRM. Um, and then, obviously, the Pi Hole, uh, it's just listening on localhost, so when you actually do the installation of Pi Hole, it gives you the URL that shows on the device on the uh, local network. And, of course, the fourth one is the Afterburner, and you have a... IP address that um, gives you, you can connect to with your smartphone, which means you can control it remotely. So essentially those are the four um, things. My um, next project I want to do is a tab that has a social media counter. So, you know, sort of subscribers on YouTube and Instagram followers, because yes, I am that vain. And uh, speaking of which, if you like this video, if you wouldn't mind subscribing and hitting the like button, and if you want to see more strangeness from Horsebox Camper, then uh, please consider hitting the bell I bell notification button as well. So, um, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, bit weird. There'll be various geeky things coming out over the uh, next few months and stuff like that but um, this was just a quick run through of how we did the um, information screen on Booby Doo. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and speak to you soon.